Welcome to another React video. Today I'll show you how to implement basic vanilla JavaScript concepts similar to what we did in the previous videos into a React project. In this tutorial, we are going to build this amazing 3D image slider that animates on scroll. You'll see how simple it is to create and you'll be able to get it up and running in just a few minutes. The logic we'll use is similar to what we typically do with HTML, CSS and JavaScript to build interactive experiences. I've received many comments from people having trouble converting that code into React code. These few videos are here to help bridge that gap and make the process easier for you. So without further ado, let's dive into the code. I have already set up a fresh React app. First, make sure to clear out the boilerplate CSS from app.css and index.css. Right now, you can see that we have a basic page with just a placeholder heading. For this project, I have stored all the images we'll need in the images folder. There are 100 images in total. We'll use these local images for this tutorial, but if you'd prefer to use image URLs like we did in the previous video, you can create an array or JSON file with all the image URLs and map through them. Check the last video if you want to learn how to do that. You can find the link in the description. Let's get started. First, we'll create a file called images.js. In this file, I'll import all the images. This isn't the most efficient approach since we have many images, but it's a common way to import the images we want to use. You could use the fetch method to load files from a local assets folder, but to keep things simple and stick to the core topic of the video, I'll stick with this approach. Now that our assets are ready, let's move to the app component and start building our slider. We'll start by adding necessary hooks. We need use state and use effect from React. Next, we'll define our app component. Inside this component, we'll create a state variable called cards using the useState hook to store our images. Now we'll use the useEffect hook to set up our cards when the component mounts. We'll map over the images array to create a new array of card objects, each with a unique ID and image source. We'll then update our cards state with this new array. Finally, we'll return the JSX for our component. We'll create a div with the class slider to hold our cards. Inside this slider, we'll map over the cards array to generate each card. Each card will have an image element displaying the image source. Let's get to styling now. First we'll remove the default margin and padding from all elements and set the box sizing to border box. Next we'll set the dimensions and background for the HTML and body. We'll make the height much larger to allow for scrolling and set the background to black. Now let's style the slider container. We'll position it fixed in the center of the viewport and use transform to apply initial 3D rotations. The transform style property is set to preserve 3D to enable 3D transformations and we'll add a smooth transition for the transform property. Next we'll style each card. We'll position them relatively, set their dimensions and apply 3D rotations. The borders will be slightly transparent and the cards will have rounded corners and hidden overflow. Notice that we set the margin property to minus 300 pixels for each card. This negative margin helps adjust the gap between images, ensuring they create a seamless 3D effect. We'll also add a smooth transition for any transformation changes.
Now it's time to add the logic for the slider animation. We'll create functions to handle scrolling, mouse over and mouse out events to make our 3D slider interactive. First we have the handle scroll function. This function calculates the vertical scroll position and uses it to update the transform property of the slider element, creating a dynamic effect where the slider moves vertically based on the scroll position. Next we define the handle mouse over and handle mouse out functions. These functions will adjust the position of card when the mouse hovers over it creating an interactive effect. In the use effect hook, after setting up our initial cards, we add an event listener for the scroll event. This means that every time the user scrolls, the handle scroll function will be called. To prevent potential memory leaks and ensure that we clean up properly, we remove the event listener when the component is unmounted. Finally, we update our JSX to include the on mouse over and on mouse out event handlers for each card. This will trigger the defined functions when the mouse hovers over or leaves a card. And that's pretty much it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.